Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to continue to work on spherical parallel joint. Last time we built this first prototype. It kind of works, but there is some room for improvements. And there are three main things which I would like to make. First of all, inverse kinematics. Second, the motors in these first prototypes are kind of uh, directly connected to the link, so it's direct drive and it's not powerful enough. So for the second point, I would like to add the reduction stage for these motors like this to improve uh, the torque. And the third point, right now in this first prototype, the output link is not super rigid. So even if I apply the small force, everything moves. And I would like to address this, so I would like to make everything more rigid. So I would like to make all the links a little bit wider and more solid. Okay, let's get started. First, let me show you the CAD model. So this is a new design. The output link, this one, and this link is the same as in previous design. And what I changed is this one and this one. So this one is 6 mm the thickness. This one is 8 mm thickness and the old one was 6 mm. And this one now it's 14 mm thickness and before it was 8 mm. So I increased the thickness of all the parts quite significantly. And also I increased the thickness of this base. Before it was 8 mm and now it's 14 mm. And here the additional reduction stage. So over here will be the motor and this motor will be connected through the belt to this pulley. And this pulley is going to drive the first link. So let me remove this one. Let me remove the pulley. So now you can see how it's made. Over here there is this part. There is this axis which is going to be fixed to this part. And on this axis we're going to put the pulley and I'm going to use exactly the same bearings as I use over here and here. So this is a 15 by 21 by 4 millimeter bearings. So like this I use the same type of bearings in the entire design. So basically I tried to add this additional reduction stage as cheaply as possible. So I have not used the closed belt, I use the open belt because it's easier to find. And I use the standard pulley for the motor. It's the same pulley is used on most of the 3D printers. Also, I started to work on inverse kinematics. And actually, here is the proof. So all this, you see, I did all these calculations. And I saw that it's kind of uh, tricky and complicated. Let me show you. So I found uh, this paper. And actually, the author of this paper, he contacted me about this joint, so he helped me a lot. And in this paper there is an inverse kinematics solved, but it's kind of complicated, it's still complicated, because here you see all these angles uh, which they use, but this is not the most complicated part. The most complicated part is over here, because uh, this is a solution for the position of each motor and this solution is uh, as you can see not easy one so a b and c is uh, defined over here and in a b and c you need to specify this uh, vector and this vector you can find from this one which is kind of you see there is a rotational matrices here it's it's a mess it's a real mess and it's i tried to implement this and for the moment it does not work and afterwards, thanks uh, to the author of this paper, I found another paper, which seems like it has the simpler solution over here for the inverse kinematics. But this simple solution for the kind of weird reference frame. So in order to use a normal reference frame, you need to apply the rotational transformation to this solution, as far as I understand. So uh, I still need to do this. And now it's perfect time to talk about why you should use Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. As you can see, in order to implement the inverse kinematics, you should be familiar with geometry, linear algebra, vectors, trigonometry, etc. So it's kind of complicated. And the Brilliant is the best way to learn all of this and even more. Because this is an interactive visual tool, which allows you to quickly grasp the new concept. It has thousands of courses in many different subjects, like 
physics, math, AI, data science, computer science, etc. And the new content is added on a monthly basis. I personally use it to refresh my knowledge in math and to learn about AI. What I love in Brilliant is that they divide the complicated topic in a small, easily understandable parts. So even if I have only a couple of spare minutes, it's enough to learn something new. To try it for free, visit brilliant.org slash scientific or click on the link in the description to this video. The first 100 of you will get 20% off from Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And now let's start the assembly. These are the parts which I prepared for today's build. This is 15 by 21 by 4 millimeter bearings. This is a pulley which I prepared. It has 20 teeth. It's for the 6 millimeter wide belt for the GT2 type belt. And it's for the 5 millimeter diameter shaft. The same as on these motors. This is an open loop belt. And I think the most interesting parts here is this one. So this is for the additional reduction stage. Over here we're going to fix the motor with a small pulley. And the big pulley is going to be here, fixed on this shaft. And this shaft is going inside over here, like this. And afterwards the shaft is going to be fixed to this part uh, properly with a 50 mm long M3 screws. And I think now it's time to disassemble this. What I'm going to keep is the, the output ring and this, uh, the last links. And of course the motors and of course the electronics. These parts from the old design I'm going to keep. Now I need to remove the first link like this. Now we need to unmount the motors. Cut the zip ties which holds the wires underneath. Now I need to unmount these screws. These parts we don't need. And I still need these ones. So these thin ones I'm going to replace with these thicker ones. So I hope it's going to be less bendy. So this is going like this. And each of these small parts go in here. And the last one. And so this is our base. I made it from three parts because otherwise uh, they does not fit on my 3D printer. But if you have a big printer, this could be a single part. But I don't have one. This part afterwards going to be fixed over here like this. But before I would like to assemble this reduction stage to see if it works. So first of all embedded nuts over here, M4 nuts. So embedded nuts are installed. I also keep the screws over here like this. These embedded nuts are not going to fall. Here on top we will put this pulley with the bearings. But before we need to install embedded nuts over here, M3 embedded nuts. Embedded nuts are installed and again I put the screws like this. These nuts are not going to fall. The bearings, one from one side, another one from another side. And this one goes here. Perfect. The axis is a little bit proud from the surface of the pulley and from the surface of the bearing like this. These three screws, even if you tighten them too much, they are not going to pinch the bearing. 50 millimeter long M3 screws. The nuts are going from the other side. Everything is tightened and the pulley rotates uh, perfectly, no problem. The motor will go like this. And the motor is installed on the slot so you can tighten the belt. The pulley goes on motor 
and I need to install it with uh, approximately one millimeter gap between the tip of the shaft and the surface. But this don't need to be precise. And we can fix the motor with a 10 millimeter long screws, M3 screws. And afterwards, like this, I can tighten the belt. I need 292 millimeter long belt, 292. And so this belt goes here with one side. You see, I made the teeth inside over there. So when you put it inside, it's not going anywhere. The screws are not perfect. You see, it's uh, the behind the belt, but they're still accessible. It seems like it works. On this pulley, we need to install the link. And uh, here I use uh, 25 millimeter long screws. And so we need to replace these screws, which are just holding the embedded nuts with these ones. And you need to fix it like this. So these parts stays on the right from the link. This is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, the nuts are not really holding well inside. So I will do it like this to use the gravity to keep the nuts in place. So sometimes the gravity is useful. The gravity worked perfect. So it can rotate from this position to this position. Beyond this, this is not good because here the belt is not going to be tightened. So it has a range of motion of 180 degrees, which is perfectly enough for the spherical parallel joint. Now we need to repeat the same for two other motors. Cool, all three are ready. Now we need to install them on this ring, on the base. So it should be installed like this. I need to do a little bit of cable management here. The cable management can be improved, but I think it's okay for now. The problem is that some of the holes for the cable management are covered with this base. So I didn't account that this base is wider than the previous one. But nevertheless, it's going to work. And these parts over here, I'm going to use to fix uh, the motors at the certain position. Like this. Next, we put this aside and we need to take care of this part. Here, I need to replace these small excesses because the original ones is a little bit too short. And when you over tighten it, you pinch the bearing and doesn't rotate uh, well. And this one is a little bit longer than it should be. So you can over tighten it and the bearings are not going to be pinched. The short one goes away. And I need to replace the three axes over here. On the second link, I have installed embedded nuts from one side and from another side. And now we need to fix them here on this bearing and we need to align the holes. So it goes like this with a 25 millimeter long screws, which are going from another side. Now this guy, we need to fix to this one. Ah, it's way more rigid. It still moves, but it's way more rigid. Cool. <laughs> Everything moves like it should. Nothing which should not touch does not touch. Yeah, seems fine. Cool. <laughs> now let's try how it moves. This is how it works.
This is accelerated video, but this is accelerated not because the motors cannot move faster, but just because I cannot move joystick faster. Because we still need to do the inverse kinematics. Cool! <laughs> I like it! And it's way more powerful thanks to this additional reduction stage. So I'm pretty happy with the mechanical build. I think it's quite solid. It's uh, well powered because before with the direct drive it was underpowered, the torque was not enough. Now the torque is perfect for this application. So I hope that next time we're going to move it with the inverse kinematics, it's going to be faster and I hope it's going to be more like uh, predictable. You don't need to do the inverse kinematics in your head and try to move it in the direction by moving the motors. It would be easier. Thank you for watching till the end. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thank you guys and girls. You are the best. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects, and see you next time.